Hello students. Today I will continue with the chapter sorting materials into groups. The chapter will include the following topics. I will deal with the properties of the materials today. They will include the appearance, hardness of the material, texture of the material and transparency. Now children, in the last video I had told you that there do exist things that do not consist of matter. Did you find out? The few things that do not consist of matter can be time, sound, sunlight, rainbow, love, heat, memories and information. Now before I continue with the chapter, let's have a quick recap. So, the first thing, what is sorting? The systematic arrangement of things on the basis of certain similarities or differences is called as sorting or classification. Classification helps us to study the properties of the things and group them. It helps us to be organized and saves our time and effort to locate the thing. Materials. Materials are substances that are used to make different objects. Now coming to composition of matter. We all know that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter is composed of very small particles called as atoms. These are the basic building blocks of matter. So, the atom is the smallest individual particle which we cannot see with our naked eyes. The element is a substance made of same types of atoms. There are 118 different elements known so far. 94 of them exists in nature. Now when atoms combine together, they form the compounds. And if you can recollect, we had also learned what is intermolecular space and what is intermolecular force. The distance between the molecules of the substance is called as the intermolecular space and the molecules, they are held together by a force of attraction which is called as the intermolecular force. Uh, now children, coming to properties of materials. Now we all know that different materials are required to make different objects. And why are these materials used? Because there are special properties of each material which are required to prepare an object. The material that is used to make an object depends on, of course, the properties of the materials and also the purpose for which the object will be used. Here I have given you an example that if I need to hold water, now I cannot use cloth or paper. Why? Because the water will seep through it. Correct? So that is why if I have to prepare a tumbler, I have to use a material that could be glass, that could be metal or that could be plastic or any material which is non-porous. Is it clear? Now, as we are going to study the properties of materials today, I'll be teaching you three properties today. One is the appearance, second is the hardness, and third is transparency. Now, let's understand what is appearance. What is the appearance of the material? Now, see, all materials, they usually look different from each other. For example, the wood has a different look compared to a glass. In a similar way, Silver would look different from paper. Correct? So all materials have a different appearance. Based on the appearance, the materials can be divided into two. One is lustrous and second is non-lustrous. Now coming to lustrous, what does lustrous mean? Some materials are shiny, whereas others are not. 
the shine present in the material is called as the luster. And so the materials that shine are lustrous materials. All the metals are lustrous. They have a particular shine. The materials that are dull, that do not shine, they are called as non-lustrous. Now, metals, they fall into the category of lustrous materials and wood would be non-lustrous. Now, you must have seen children that if you have a silver glass or your mom's silver jewellery, that becomes dull in appearance. Why does that happen? With time, due to the action of air and moisture, most metals tend to lose their shine and give a dull appearance. This dull appearance from the silver and the gold ornaments can be removed by getting them repolished. Okay, so certain non-metals now, they also have luster. Can you name certain non-metals that have luster? I'll give you an example like iodine crystals and graphite. Now materials can also be classified based on its hardness. They can be classified into two. One is hard. Now what are hard materials? The materials that are difficult to compress. It means that when you are pressing it, it is difficult to compress them. Those materials are called as hard materials. Exactly opposite to that are soft materials. Materials that can be compressed easily are called as soft materials. Example of hard material could be stone or steel or diamond. Do you know that the hardest known substance found in nature is diamond? Opposite to that, a soft material could be cotton as well as foam. Now it is interesting to know that the hardness of the material can be measured. It is measured by a scale called as the Mohs scale. It is based on the ability of one mineral to scratch another. Now in this Mohs scale, there are 10 minerals. Amongst them all, diamond is considered to be the hardest of all and the scale it stands on is 10. Now, coming to the next property is texture. Now, when we feel a material, it could be either that there are no ridges or no bumps on it or you could feel that there are many ridges or bumps on the material. This way, the material can be divided as rough or it could be divided as smooth. The smooth surfaces have no bumps and ridges and have a plain surface. Like the material, if you feel silk, then it is a smooth material. The surface of the tree bark, an unfinished wall and sandpaper, they are all rough materials and we can feel the bumps and the ridges on its surface and hence those materials are rough materials or their texture is rough. Now let's move on to the next property. The next property which we will study is transparency. Now what is transparency? It is a physical property that allows light to pass through a material. Now based on the amount of light that passes through the material, the materials can be divided into three. First is transparent material, second is translucent material and third is opaque. Now let's understand transparent materials first. Substances or materials through which light can pass through completely are called as transparent materials. Now, when you see through a transparent material, you can see clearly on the other side. An easiest example of transparent material is air. Now, there are certain materials which allow light to pass through them partially. These materials are called as translucent materials. 
things are partially visible through the translucent material. Example of translucent material is butter paper, oiled paper or frosted glass. There are certain substances or materials that do not allow light to pass through them. And so we cannot see through them and these materials are called as opaque materials. Wood, metal and brick wall are examples of opaque material. I hope the chapter is clear. I'll conclude the chapter in the third part where I'll be dealing with the solubility of substances or solubility as the property of a material. Thank you.